Hello, Manaka Matachi. This is Joy Girl. Let's get straight into reviewing chapter 1039. So starting with the color spread, I really liked it because it made me feel very nostalgic. There was a real sense of familiarity when I was looking at that color spread. I don't know whether it's the background of the jungle, you know, them being in a forest, which is a familiar scene. You know, reminds me of Little Garden, or probably more like Skypea. The monkey, for example, also looks really familiar, like something that we've seen before. But I guess the way that he's dressed, it's probably more of an homage to the Monkey King, which is why Luffy's looking up at it sort of as a reflection to himself maybe. Like always, there's some cool details that Oda's added in in terms of the writing, in terms of the words that are on people's clothes. Nami says Odin, for example. Sanji says freedom, maybe in honor of his captain. Maybe it's a, maybe we could get really meta and say that Sanji is talking about freedom from his Kyoma family because obviously we didn't get a cover story. So we and Sanji, I suppose, are getting a break from following their story. And it means that Sanji has the freedom of not having to be in the same chapter as them. I don't know. Um, a bit nonsensical. I'm definitely reading way too much into that. But I'm sure that one day we will all really read into all of the details that are in this color spread because that's just what we do. I'm sure later down the line we'll find a few things and then we'll look back to this color spread to, you know, try to map out which possible hints were being left in which sort of details. This one particularly so, I think because of Robin, the fact that she's looking at a skull. I don't know if it's supposed to be like a map like Jaya or whether it's supposed to be just a skull like an artifact but the fact that she's examining it, studying it, I don't know, just raises some curiosity. It also seems like there's a face behind her as well but like I said, We'll pour into the details at some other time. So anyways, let's move on to the chapter. So we start off with a look at Momonosuke and we're continuing that trend of seeing little glimpses of Momo here and there sprinkled in throughout different developments. This one was longer than others. Sometimes we really see him in just one panel, one really small panel. This chapter did give him a little bit more of a concerted focus, but again, it still wasn't huge. There still wasn't a lot of him and it makes sense. I'm sure we are going to get a huge focus on him a little bit later as other things are wrapping up because I'm sure the storyline of him having to save the island from crashing down onto Wano is going to be such a pivotal moment during this arc. But for now, the little update that we get is that he's still struggling but steadily, you know, raining back the island. Now, this seems to be the clearest panel where we've seen the exact mechanics of how he's actually achieving this. It confirms how we thought that he was doing it based on what we saw before. It did seem like he had wrapped around the clouds around the island and then he was using that to pull, which is what we got in this chapter. The way that his position and the way that Onigashima is positioned, you know, relative to him, does make it seem like he's got the island on his back. But then I won't go so far to say that this is an homage or callback to Odin's Hour of Legends, because again, I do think that Momo's moment is coming, and I do think that we might actually get a real, real cool, sick panel of him actually holding up the island, so I don't want to jump the gun. In any case, probably the most interesting thing about this segment was his little piece of dialogue, him commenting, oh, is someone calling my name? Now, because of what we've seen in chapter 1037, the most likely answer is that it is Zunisha, now that Zunisha has arrived. And it would make sense that Zunisha is calling for Momonosuke, especially if what I said during my breakdown of chapter 1037 is true, and Momo did actually request Zunisha to come to Wano when he stayed behind at Zo to have a conversation. And one of the things that he asked was requesting Zunisha to come, come help them. So maybe now Zunisha saying, you know, no, I'm here. But it could also be someone else, but it does seem like it might be using the voice of all things. So it does on one hand limit the number of candidates on who could be calling him, like Luffy, for example. We don't know many people that actually can use the voice of all things, but you know what? Maybe that's how we even get introduced to another character. But for the time being, the more likely answer is probably Zunisha. So then moving on to essentially what the rest of the chapter was about, which is the continuation of the fight between Big Mom and the two supernova captains, Eustace Kidd and Trafalgar Law. Now, despite the fact that this chapter was relatively simple in the respect that it didn't focus on so many different aspects, so many different areas of the war, and it was really just solely focused on that fight, there is just so much to say about this fight. Starting off with the bantering, because that's something that I always enjoy. Now, of course, it isn't new. This is something that we've seen. It's a dynamic that's 
very, very heavily prevalent and has been very prevalent amongst the Supernova trio, even from their introduction, even from Sabori. But it's always such a nice element of comedy. It's always a nice addition of humor sprinkled into chapters when we see moments like this. And this chapter was no different. But I also do think that it also goes deeper than that. And it's a great way for us to get a greater feel and really for Oda to showcase how truly he sticks to the characterization, to the personality, how true the characters stay to who they are. For example, this was very apparent with Kid. I know Law started it in this chapter by saying, hey, I have to just set up all the attacks and you're getting all the cool finishing blows. But it was really Kid who stuck through and through, really sticking to who he is, just being so disagreeable as a person. Even in that moment when things did get a little bit serious and Law was saying, hey, I'm serious now though, everything aside, I need your help, you know, this is going to be my last attack. And even still, Kid's just like, shut up, don't tell me what to do. But I've really come to appreciate this bantering even more after our resident in-house Japanese counsel, Sekaichi, thanks so much, explained to us during the chapter reaction stream that the title of this chapter which in English was the main attraction but in Japanese apparently that's actually something like utori which is a reference to a musical performance and that means the last performance or the last performer so I think it makes sense that they were fighting over who's going to have that last hurrah and it makes sense that Laura and Kid were fighting over that final that main act now as for the fight itself this was again a continuous continuation of just a showcase of Devil Fruits. The extreme versatility, the immense power and abilities that Devil Fruits can bring you. And I think it's just so great, so refreshing, because obviously ever since the time skip, and even more recently in the Wano arc, power and strength and abilities in One Piece have largely focused on one's Haki abilities. So then to have a lot more focus on Devil Fruits and how useful Devil Fruits can be, I think it's always quite refreshing, quite nice to see. I think this was really seen through the immense versatility of Big Mom especially and her devil fruit power. We keep getting extensions of what we know of her devil fruit and it's just so so insane. Her devil fruit in my opinion has really shot up as one of the most useful devil fruits out there. It's definitely one of the ones that I would like to have the most. How she can manipulate people's souls, create homies, make weapons out of them and then heal herself. Not only increase sort of her force by using her own life force, but then to heal herself, heal her broken bones. She had broken ribs. And then also Misery. I mean, that was just insane. I really loved the sleek design of Misery. I thought it was really, really cool. It does have me wondering, I wonder whether it's the manifestation of how Big Mom perceives herself. Is this how she sees herself of her younger days? A sleeker, cooler, you know, fresh version? Or knowing Big Mom, is this how she still views herself? self currently because we do have to give our props to Big Mom even when we take her devil fruit abilities out of the consideration Big Mom herself has just been such a tank such an incredible force through this whole time we've been seeing her getting hammered just crazy attacks from all sides and still each time she gets back up still looking terrifying absolutely ferocious and even now after everything that happened in the last chapter in this chapter with Big Mom down people are still saying that they're unsure as to whether Big Mom is defeated. Of course, there's a fact that it hasn't actually been confirmed and the fact that we haven't gotten any sort of confirmation through her homies. You know, it's not like all her homies have returned back to normal because she's been defeated. And there is still a large portion of the community that believes that she still could have some gas left in the tank for one more attack, one more fight. And I think that really speaks to her strength and to Big Mom's character because of what we've seen so far. Even in this chapter when Kid assigned those magnetic blocks and then we see Big Big Mom in her state, after everything she went through in the last chapter, being able to move a whole block, I mean, she is just a powerhouse. So I think even if Big Mom was defeated here, or if she goes down, you know, relatively early on soon, I think even as Oda was giving the highlights to Law and Kid, he was still really emphasizing her combat ability and her physicality. But on that note, as amazing as Big Mom was in this chapter, of course, the main highlights of this chapter was Law and Kid. Seriously, the fights, the attacks, the coordination and the choreography was just phenomenal. It was 
out of this world. And I really mean like out of this world in the sense that as I was reading it, I was thinking, is this One Piece? I'll be reading a One Piece chapter. It just felt so unreal. The types of attacks we were seeing, the types of abilities we were seeing was just like, this is insane. This is not One Piece. I think Oda did a really good job in how he handled Kit and Law. The way that he was able to give them power-ups, super strong, broken power-ups that makes it convincing enough on how they're able to defeat Big Mom. But at the same time, within the boundaries, the realm of what could be perceived as believable as within their limits. So I think that was really well done by Oda. But we'll get into the details and we'll start with Law because as he pointed out in this chapter as well, he's the one to go first. So with Law, before we get into his super cool attack, I do want to point out his durability. I think the topic of how durable Law actually is, is always an interesting one, especially because of his style of fighting. But in this chapter, it was just amazing to witness him because I really think he showcased his level of endurance and durability here. During those panels where he's on top of Big Mom and Big Mom is just hitting him. It's not super clear from the panel because it does seem like she's coated her arms with Haki. So I don't know if she was hitting him with Haki or whether they just weren't connecting because it did seem like her fists weren't necessarily hitting him physically. And that just might've been the drawing style. But it was safe to say that she was hitting him over and over again. And he was just hanging on not losing grip of his sword. Just an immense showcase of determination and durability on his part. The way that he was burying in his sword in her the entire time, not letting go, to the point that Big Mom actually had to ask, did you croak? It was like he was so still, like a dead body not moving because all he was doing was just clinging on for dear life. And then when I saw Puncture Willy, that was just absolutely nuts. I mean, the sheer size and then the way that Oda drew it, again, just so, so clean and the huge impact that he had that it left a crater. And knowing One Piece, knowing Oda, I'm sure that that crater will become useful, will become relevant again somewhere down the line. Given the fact that we had a brief cutaway to Yamato to build this part up, the fact that we saw Yamato and we saw the hole, maybe that's actually how Yamato is going to defuse the bombs, defuse the problem, is going to be able to use that hole to throw away all the bombs, throw away all the explosives elsewhere. I don't know, I'm sure it is going to come into use somewhere because we saw something similar earlier on in the raid when we saw Big Mom being able to use the holes to fly through fly through the castle. But anyways, if it does become useful, apart from the fact that Law's attack, this attack, helped hugely in being able to weaken Big Mom, that attack of his is going to have another layer of usefulness if somehow it ends up helping the Alliance, if it ends up advancing the Alliance's side in some way. And in saying that, I do hope that's how it's going to be used and not by the enemy. But if it is used again and helps the Alliance, it'll just work so well with Law's character and how useful he is, this time even without thinking of it. Or maybe we'll claim that he did think of it. But it does stay so true to Law's character through and through. And again, that quality, that depth of characterization was something that we saw through Law in this chapter as well. Even though he was the one complaining at the beginning, when it comes down to it, Law's the level-headed one that sets up the attack for Kid. And that sequence of how that all played out was just fantastic. I loved following the panels through to watch that all unfold because it was really just magnificent. We start with Law calling on Kid, now Eustace Ya, and then seeing that rail gun just in a small panel so it's not so clear at first, but then that massive one, that massive rail gun cut to Kid's determined crazy face and then moving on to see Law smile, that grin as if he's thinking, oh Big Mum, you are screwed now. You are in for it. As if he knows before moving on to Big Mum and at first she's surprised, but Big Mom being the badass that she is, is not only not scared, but she welcomes the attack. You know, she's saying, you think you can beat me? I am Big Mom. Just declaring her name. How cool is that? I am Big Mom. And even if those are her last words, that's a pretty damn cool way to go. Especially because of Kid's response. You are Big Mom. You're Big Mom. That's why I have to defeat you. You're one of the big roadblocks standing in my way, standing in our way so that we can become the next generation. It's such a meaningful dynamic of showing the old and the new, the powerful 
helpful and the emerging it's that level of respect or acknowledgement and then that ending as well that your era is over again everything about this fight from the paneling the way that it was drawn the choreography the dialogue it was amazing i loved it now we do only get to see the white in big mom's eyes so it does seem like she might be out but again it hasn't been confirmed can't see it through her homies and i really wouldn't be surprised if big mom gets back up next chapter or the next time we see her and if she does then we know that law is down we know that law is out for the count he said so himself in this chapter that this is really it so if big mom does get back up then it's really just left for kid i think that would make a lot of sense and it would continue the trend of what we've been Getting between the parallels between Kid and Luffy so far. This is something that I've mentioned before, but Kid has always been portrayed to be Luffy's rival. I know that people have been thinking that that hasn't been the case ever since we got to Wano, but we have seen that pattern before and it could really continue if Kid does continue to fight Big Mom and has to finish her off following this chapter. Because the way that I've always personally interpreted it is that the two are rivals, but Luffy is just slightly higher always just comes out slightly on top even from their introductions the two have the highest bounties kids is actually even higher but the only reason why kids is higher is because he's been causing havoc he's been terrorizing civilians whereas luffy's actually been earning his bounties by impressive feats and then in the post time skip around the same time that luffy joins an alliance with law kid is seen getting into an alliance with hawkins and apu but his alliance is the unsuccessful one his alliance is the one that that fails. And then similar to Luffy's plans of taking down all the Emperors of the Sea, we know that Kid has been going through a similar journey confronting all of the Yonko, but Kid I feel like has suffered a bit more. He lost his arm in the process for example. And then both of them going into Toto land, invading Big Mom's territory, both of them leaving not having lost their lives, but obviously also not having defeated Big Mom herself. But then again, whereas Luffy defeats a commander, we know that Kid was only able to injure one of Big Mom's crew. So then he if Luffy is going to defeat Kaido and Kid is going to do the same to Big Mom but then again the difference is it's going to be that Kid is defeating a heavily injured Big Mom a really weakened Big Mom because of the combined attacks with Law because you could say that both Kid and Law needed each other to defeat Big Mom but you could argue that it's been Law who's dealt the most damage and maybe even that he's done more than Kid which is why it could make sense if Big Mom hasn't lost quite yet so that now that Law's had his time to shine so that he could show off all of his cool attacks it's now time for kid but then of course on that note we have seen more of kids cool powers the electromagnetic cannon in this chapter was just so cool seeing him with the rail gun and again i know people haven't been too impressed with kid in this arc even after the last chapter i know people were quite upset were quite disappointed in kid showings i must have been one of the only ones that actually really enjoyed kid even or especially in the last chapter but then of course i really do enjoy seeing the more creative and the great expansive use of his powers like we saw in this chapter. I am really excited to see the continued expansion, the continued use of his devil fruit so that we can see him, you know, really master the electromagnetic forces instead of just seeing the brute force of using big metal scraps. Again, as cool as I personally found that too. But again, that's why I partly say that Big Mom could still get back up. So this way we get more of a focus on kids so that we can see him expand, we can see him grow, so we can see him use more of his powers and also because we do need to prop her up she is a yonko after all she can't get defeated too quickly and oda has already done that he's done that in such a clever way because usually where we see a self-referring title a title named after a fight in the next chapter we see the antagonist we see the opponent going down and then obviously we didn't get that in this chapter because the fight continued so this is really a smart subtle way for oda to subvert our expectations and a really neat way to hammer in with the Yonko, you can't expect the same. But then that being said, this chapter was titled The Main Attraction, which of course could be just a pun on the idea of magnets like kids' powers. But then if you also think about the idea of it being the main act or the last performance in Japanese, as we said, then maybe this really is the end for Big Mom. And even if she does get back up, it's only going to be very brief and she'll be wrapped up pretty soon. But anyways, that's it from me on chapter 1039. We have no break next week, which is always 
always a great news. So make sure to stay tuned. And whilst we wait for that chapter, make sure to leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and share the video. And please do subscribe so that we can continue to discuss One Piece. And you can also join our Joy Fleet Discord server or even become a patron member. And I want to thank all my patron members for help supporting the channel. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.